Welcome to another video. Today we'll be talking about Ryzen 5. Now I'm going to assume that if you're here, you already know what the clock speeds, the core counts, and the prices are going to be. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that, but here they are. What I'm here to talk about is what we can reasonably expect from Ryzen 5 in terms of performance. Now to start off, in terms of gaming, I see no reason at all to expect anything different than exactly what we got from Ryzen 7. Now if you're expecting Ryzen 5 to come in swinging and steal all those gaming benchmarks and outperform Ryzen 7 and compete directly with Intel's best, you're going to be disappointed. If you compare Ryzen's best 4-core, 8-thread CPU, which is the 1500X, directly against Intel's best 4-core, 8-thread CPU, which is the 7700K, the 7700K is going to win in every situation. There's three reasons for this. The first one is clock speed. The 7700K has a much faster base clock and we also know that it can easily overclock to 5 GHz. With the 1500X, I would be surprised to see it hit 4.4. The second reason is IPC. Now Ryzen has matched Broadwell in terms of IPC, but has not matched Skylake. Now it's not a big difference. Beyond the, the clock speed and like an 8-9% IPC difference, which might even be an exaggeration, there is effectively no difference in performance for the most part between Ryzen and Intel. Any further differences in performance goes on to my third point, Intel optimizations. Intel has been the main player for years now, and most people, if they're optimizing for a specific CPU, they're going to be optimizing for Intel. This is going to result in a lot of benchmarks really favoring Intel for the next while. Given the relative strength of Ryzen, this could change, but it won't change instantly. Now another way to look at it is, on one side, you could compare 4-core 8-thread CPUs, the best of the 4-core 8-thread CPUs of AMD and Intel respectively, Another way to look at it is price, actual value. There is no doubt that the 1500X is going to perform worse than the 7700K. However, the 1500X cost $190 compared to the 7700K's $350. The 1500X is just over half the price. So let's talk price performance and let's predict where the performance is going to lie. Let's assume that Ryzen is going to have about 92% the IPC that Skylake has same as KB Lake. That's a fairly reasonable assumption. Now let's assume you're going to be able to overclock the 1500X to about 4.2 gigahertz, reasonably, on a good cooler. Now let's assume that you'll be able to overclock the 1500X to probably about 4.2 gigahertz. I assume it'll be slightly easier, but not significantly easier to clock than the 1800X. So at about 84% the clock speed, because you can get the 7700 up to about 5 gigahertz, and about 92% the IPC, we're looking at the 1500X having an effective performance or an effective maximum performance given overclocking of probably, and rounding down a little bit even, about three quarters that of the 7700K. This is not even accounting for the fact that the 1500X comes with a decent Wraith cooler and also that a B350 motherboard, which you'll be able to overclock on, is significantly cheaper than a Z170 motherboard, or sorry, Z270 motherboard, that you're gonna need to overclock the 7700K decently. I also wanna point out that the 300 megahertz difference between the 1400 and the 1500X, and only $20 difference means that the 1400X is honestly not gonna be worth buying if you're considering that, you're much better off going with the 1500X. 
unless it turns out that the 1400 can easily be overclocked as high as the 1500X, which might be the case considering that seems to be the case with Ryzen 7. A 1700 will overclock nearly as well as an 1800X, meaning the price difference of $170 makes the 1800X just not worth buying for most people. Most people, if you're considering Ryzen 7, should go for the 1700X and overclock it considering it is very very easy to overclock it to as high as the 1800X will go, or at least very close to. And to be honest, the difference between the 1600 and the 1600X is the same thing, except it's a bigger gap. It's, and it's only $30. You might as well go with the 1600X if you're considering the 1600, unless the reviews come out and say that the 1600 can easily be overclocked that high. Now, in conclusion, as of April 11th, there are five CPUs actually worth buying to 99% of people. There are exceptions, of course. There's the Pentium G4560 by Intel, which at $65 offers the best performance at an extremely low price. Now, if you can afford more than $65 for a CPU, in my opinion, don't bother unless you can afford $190 for the 1500X. There's simply no other processor in that price range that actually has valuable price performance by comparison to the Pentium or the Ryzen chip. That is making the 1500X number two in my list of five. This leads into number three, which is the 1600X. At 3.6 gigahertz base and four gigahertz boost, I honestly think the 1600X is going to be the sweet spot for most people at $250. That is incredible value. I honestly suspect it to be very close to the 7700K, if not even beating the 7700K for product Activity, making the 1600X the best value workstation CPU. Given it has the highest clock speed and thus assumably the best binning, it's also likely to be the best gaming CPU in the entire Ryzen range. It has enough cores and high enough of a clock speed to really hold its own. And the 1600X for barely any more money than the i5-7600K offers six cores and 12 threads compared to four cores and four threads. This is less performance per thread, but much better multi-core performance, which is going to be more important as time progresses. Finally, the last two in the series are the 1700, not the X, not the 1800X. The 1700 overclocks very easily all the Ryzen 7 chips seem to have an overclock ceiling, meaning they can hit about 3.9 to 4.1, which is a very near margin, regardless of what CPU you have, if it's a Ryzen 7. These clock speeds are very easy to get to. Even for a beginner that is never overclocked, is worried about overclocking, 3.9 to 4.1 gigahertz is very easy to get to. Now getting past that is extremely difficult, but getting to that point is very accessible, making, in my opinion, the 1700 the best value Ryzen 7 CPU to the point that nobody else should really be considering anything else given they have the information. And the last in the list, because it's the most expensive, is the best enthusiast gaming CPU, which obviously is the 7700K. Yes, it has much less value than some of the others. Its price performance isn't amazing, but for a lot of people, they just want the performance regardless of the price. And the 7700K gives it that. None of the other CPUs are going to get the frame rates that the 7700K is capable of. 